This is the second of two videos for people with little or no experience opening beehives. In this video, we will show you how to open a hive, what you will see when you inspect frames, and how to react if you get stung. In addition to watching this video, we suggest working with a local beekeeper. Typically, the best way to learn about colony management is with an experienced beekeeper. Before going to an apiary to inspect colonies, be sure to have all your equipment ready. This includes your bee suit, veil, gloves, smoker, smoker fuel, lighter, and hive tool. We also recommend having water available for cleaning your hands and hive tool. Colony inspections are usually easier with a couple of empty hive boxes. They can be used as risers to stack hive equipment. Not only will using them reduce the strain on your back, but it will also keep bees off of the ground, minimizing the chances of them getting crushed. Honeybee behavior can be influenced by the weather. Colonies that are gentle on warm sunny days can be extremely aggressive on cloudy, cool, or rainy days. So whenever possible, you should inspect colonies between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on nice sunny days with little to no wind. Always approach colonies from the rear or the side and try to avoid standing or walking in front of the colony's entrance. Being in front of the entrance will put you in the flight path of foragers exiting and returning to the hive, increasing your chances of getting stung. Once you are next to the colony, puff smoke into the entrance. Wait a few seconds and then remove the top cover and place it upside down behind the colony. If you have an empty hive box, place it squarely on the top cover. Next, use your hive tool to separate the inner cover from the top box. By gently pushing down on the top of the inner cover while prying it up, you can prevent it from popping off of the top box, which could aggravate the bees. Once the inner cover has been pried loose, puff smoke between the cover and top box in order to drive bees down into the lower boxes. When applying smoke to colonies, it should always be directed so that it passes over the frames, top bars, rather than down between the frames themselves. After smoking the hive, wait several seconds before removing the inner cover. During certain times of year, one or more honey supers can be found on top of the brood chamber. The supers need to be removed in order to inspect the brood nest below. To remove the supers and other hive boxes, you must first crack them apart using your hive tool. As you lift the super up, puff smoke between the boxes. Wait a few seconds for the bees to travel down and remove the super. Stack it on top of the empty hive box that was placed behind the colony. After removing the supers, you will reach the queen excluder. Queen excluders are used to prevent the queen from laying eggs in the honey supers. When removing the queen excluder, be sure that the hive tool's blade does not press against the excluder's mesh. This mesh is precisely spaced to allow worker bees to pass through while preventing the larger queen from moving through it. Sometimes, when the excluder is tightly attached to the hive box with wax and propolis, you will need to pry up on each corner of the excluder and then gently twist it free. Check the excluder for the queen before stacking it upside down on the removed honey supers. When inspecting a brood nest of two or more hive boxes, it is a good idea to separate the hive boxes from each other before inspecting the individual combs. Remove the topmost brood chamber and stack it on top of the queen excluder. If the inspected colonies don't have a queen excluder, then the removed brood nest should be placed on top of an empty hive box and not on top of the removed honey supers in order to prevent the queen from moving into the supers. The top brood nest should then be covered with the inner cover. Removing the first frame in each brood chamber is perhaps the most difficult step of a colony inspection. The first frame that should be removed from a hive box is the frame in the second position from the left. To remove the second frame, insert your hive tool between the first and second frame and push the nine frames in front of your hive tool away from you. Next, pry the second frame away from the third frame. Then, lift the second frame by inserting the hive tool below its top bar while using the first frame for leverage. When the frame has been successfully lifted up by a couple of inches, 
grasp the top bar with both hands and slowly remove it from the brew chamber. As you lift the frame, be careful not to crush the bees. When handling a frame, always hold it by the top bar. Holding the protruding ends of the top bar between the thumb and index finger will give you a firm grip on the frame. Also, you should always hold a frame above an open brood nest. This way, if the queen is on the frame, she will fall back into the brood nest. As you hold a frame, try to have the sunlight coming over your back and onto the frame to provide better visibility. To inspect the back side of the comb, rotate the frame so that its bottom bar swings up and away. Once a frame has been removed from a hive box, inspecting the other frames is relatively easy. To keep a working space between frames, take the first frame and lean it against the front of the hive near the colony's entrance. If the queen was viewed on that frame, it should be reinserted back into the box. As successive frames are removed from the colony for inspection, they should be placed back into the colony snugly against the frame previously inspected. If you see what appears to be clear liquid in the cells, you are seeing uncapped honey. This is the fresh nectar that the bees have stored in the hive. If there is a white or light yellow wax capping covering the cells, you are seeing capped honey. You can test this by piercing the wax covering of a cell and watching the honey seep out. Pollen ranges in colors from green to gray and from pale yellow to bright orange. It is very distinctive and can easily be seen. As you pull frames closer to the center, you will encounter the brood area of the hive. The brood will usually fit the center of a frame and it can extend out to the very edges. It is very typical, however, to have brood surrounded on the edges by honey and pollen. If a queen has been on the frame recently, you may see very tiny eggs in the center and bottom of each cell. These eggs will be white and look like a grain of rice. Bee larvae appear as white grubs in the bottom of the cells and are much easier to see than eggs. You will see a white milky substance around the larvae. This is brood food, the source of food for the young bees. After approximately six days, the larvae are capped with a wax covering by adult bees. This capping is usually light brown or yellowish in color. Once all of the frames within the brood nest have been inspected, the hive can be closed. It is important that all the frames be replaced in the same position and orientation that they came out. To do this, the frames should be pushed back into their original location and a space should be left for the second frame to be reinserted. The bees clinging to this frame should be removed before it is reinserted into the colony so they are not crushed. Do this by brushing them off or by firmly shaking the frame over the brood nest. Once the second frame is reinserted, the space between all the frames should be equalized and they should be centered in the hive box to prevent the workers from building burr comb. The hive boxes should be restacked in the same order they were moved. Smoke should be applied to the top of the box on the hive and to the bottom of the box that is about to be stacked on the hive. This will reduce the likelihood of crushing bees that have congregated on the frames. Also, Care should be taken to ensure that the hive boxes are stacked squarely on top of one another. If there were any weights on top of the top cover, return them to the top of the hive. As a beekeeper, eventually you will get stung. Honeybees are genetically programmed to protect their home. They are equipped with a stinger attached to a venom sac. This stinger is barbed and is designed to stay in the target. If you are stung and the colony you are inspecting gets excited or aggressive, the best course of action is to wait a day or so for another opportunity to manipulate that particular colony. Calmly close up the colony and walk away slowly. Fast and uncoordinated movements could excite the bees even more, leading to more stings. The quickest, most effective tool to use to remove a stinger is your fingernail. In a quick, shallow, flicking motion, use your fingernail to get under the exposed stinger and remove it. 
Do not attempt to pull the stinger out because you may inadvertently release more venom. With the stinger, a pheromone has been applied to the area that alerts other honeybees that you are a target. Gently smoking the site can help to mask this pheromone odor and prevent more stings. Learning to use a smoker properly is the best way to avoid honeybee stings, but it has to be used preemptively to disrupt honeybee communication so they cannot organize themselves to confront you. This is the conclusion of our video on opening and inspecting hives. We hope this information helps as you begin beekeeping. If you have any questions, we encourage you to contact your State Department of Agriculture or University Extension Specialist.